Well, welcome back to the third part of the Chinook build. Um, in this particular part, just want to see, show you where we've got up to again. So, the top two sides and the floor have been taped together and stuck together. The joins along here aren't particularly very good. Had to need, use quite a bit of masking tape, as you can see, to get everything to line up. And then inside the compartment, troop, troop compartment, I don't know what it's called. Um, as you can see, everything's all tucked away and all the detail and pretty much all that sort of stuff I can't really see now. Um, still got to do the legs here uh, there to uh, fit the the ramp the ramp at the moment is going through paint um, but that's where the body has got so far it's all stuck up just let that set and um, while the bodies are all setting up I thought look at the ins internals of the actual outer shell of the kit, um, these two halves, and looked at what I needed to do. Um, the kit does actually, kit instructions do tell you to paint this area, the front areas uh, black, and the rear area where the engines are uh, a metal colour. So I've done the metal colour at the back, the front I've done. I think it was a dark sea grey um, because I didn't think black would be right um, so my model I'll do what I like um, and this particular section here um, I've done actually no this the, I go I digress the the nose sections here were done in the dark uh, grey blue um, which is a Vallejo colour, um, this grey blue, um, which I think was is quite a nice colour um, as an off black, if you like. Um, so that's that, and then this part of the body was done as in a in a dark sea grey, um, mainly because um, when the model has gone together, you won't really see this, but I also didn't want to have. Um, big areas of of light plastic so they've got a color that metal color there um, this metal color matches the internal walls of the of the chinook where the ramp is so that sort of continuity across that and that's where the sort of cockpit area is the doors I've fitted and the in this one the window um, because I wanted everything closed, um, mainly because I want to look at how this is this is painted. So I wanted to get that less troublesome. But that's where we are with the internal bodies at the moment. Now, the other thing that we needed to do, or I needed to do, was to check the fit. There's no indications here of a, of a fit point. So the two halves of the body um, go together. Pretty much, I think the only real locating point is this area here. So I put the two halves together and promptly drop that up. Um, and that's really to see what the fit was like and how the two halves would go together. Um, the only thing really that locates the two halves is some locating pegs in the, in the top ridge there um, and at the front. So we just sort of line everything up to see how that goes together. And to be fair, it's not a bad fit, but the alignment of the windows. 
um, needs correcting and that, that's going to take some fettling so that's the next stage really so the next stage is to install the various glazing parts into body shell and the first things I normally do with any kit is take any of the cockpit glass and in this case the nose of the Chinook has got copious amounts of cockpit glass wrap them in some tissue get a, a kitchen roll any, anything you've got but anything to protect it and I keep all the glazed uh, parts all the glazing parts in a ziplock bag uh, within the kit box or or in a safe place so that they don't get scratched and they don't get don't get uh, damaged in any way so the, the instructions are fairly straightforward um, and quite clear as to what parts you need um, and I what I tend to do is with the glazing parts is uh, I'm very careful how I, how I cut them off the sprues um, what I tend to do is, is if I'm going to cut them off the sprues um, or well, when I'm going to cut them off the sprues more like um, I always cut them a little bit away from the material I never cut them close up to the material even though I'm using Tamiya cutters I always give myself a bit of space so that I can you know get in fairly close to it but not right up close to it just in case it shatters don't want it to cause any any uh, distortion marks on on the glazing so do that cut all the glazing parts off and then we'll fit them into the the parts of the the body shell so in this case I've just taken that one off and left a little bit there you go just left a little bit of the sprue gate there and then what I can do is I can sand that away with a bit of uh, um, bit of uh, sanding stick <laughs> god it's really hard to try and explain what I'm doing but there you go but then I, I use do that and, and use a sanding stick to take the rest of it away until it's the right shape and then get it stuck into position but that, that's the easiest way with the with the glazing parts